Hello guys. So today in this video, we will learn in detail about how Ada Boost algorithm works in case of classification problem. Okay. So basically, we will be considering a binary classification problem and we will walk through each and every step involved in Ada Boost algorithm in detail. Okay. So what is Ada Boost algorithm? Ada Boost machine learning algorithm is a class of ensemble techniques which falls under the boosting category okay so when i say boosting category we will combine multiple models which would be weak learners and in the end we will combine all of them in some way to achieve our end goal which will be low bias and low variance model okay so ada boost is one such algorithm which falls under boosting ensemble techniques so here i have written down the steps for ada boost algorithm so initially what we will do we will assign some weights to each of the records that we have with us we will fit a decision tree with max depth is equal to 1. So usually it will be a model with which will be having high bias. Okay. So the best model to choose would be decision tree with a max depth is equal to 1. So here we will be making use of something called as decision stump. So if we set max depth is equal to 1, we call it as a decision stump or a shallow decision tree. Okay. So let's just remember this particular term. And the third step, we will get the prediction from this particular decision stump. Then using some formulas, we will compute the weight for this particular decision stump, which is also a trained model. Then what we will do, we will update the weights for each of the records based on the predictions done by this particular decision stump such that the correctly classified records will get less weight and misclassified records would get more weight. Okay. Then what we will do, we will create a new data set by upsampling the misclassified records, maintaining the total number of records in the data set that we had initially. Okay. And then what we will do, we will repeat the steps 2 through 6 multiple times. So how many times we repeat it? So many times so that the number of models would be equal to k models that we desire to have okay and by the end we will have k models each of them will have its own weights assigned to it so that we can have our end prediction okay so these are the these are the steps involved in ada boost machine learning algorithm it's just an overview now what we will do we will go through each of these steps in detail with complete math involved in it okay so for that, let us first set up the task at hand. Okay. So let us assume that we have total 10 records with us. So M is equal to 10. And let's say we have N features with us. X1, X2, X3 up to Xn. Okay. And Y is our target variable, which takes the value either 0 or 1. Okay. So 0 represents one class, 1 represents another class. So we are dealing with a binary classification problem here. Okay. So now let us start with our ada boost machine learning algorithm so our goal is to train the ada boost model to fit to this particular data set okay so the first step is assigning weights to each of the records so what we will do we will create a column here called as weights and we will assign weights to each of these records initially that's our first step so how do we assign the weights initially so it's nothing but 1 by total number of records that we have. So in this case, we have 10 records, right? So each record will get 0 0.1 as its weight value. So let me just write it. So each record will get the weight value as 0 0.1. So I'll quickly write it for each of the records here. Okay. So we have 0 0.1 weight assigned to each of the records. Okay. So then what we will do? we will go to the second step. So what we will do, we will train a decision tree with max depth is equal to 1. So that will be our decision stump and let's call that decision stump. Let's name it as M1 which is which stands for model 1. Okay. So the second step is to train a decision stump. Okay. And let's call this as model 1. Okay. Once we train it, we will get its prediction. Get its prediction. 
and let's call the prediction of this model one as y hat m1 okay so i'll just write it y hat m1 so let me write the predictions now so we can write some predictions so let us say we get the predictions like 1 1 0 1 1 1 1 0 0 1 so these are our predictions from our first decision stump okay so if you see here it is misclassifying this second data point right actual value is 0 but it is predicting 1 it is misclassifying this particular data point actual class is 1 but it is predicting 0 and it is also misclassifying this fifth data point 1 2 3 4 5 fifth data point okay and in the end it is misclassifying this particular data point as well which is eighth data point so in total it is misclassifying four data points and correctly classifying six data points okay so this is our second step second and third step right so fit a decision stump and then get its prediction now what we'll do we'll go to the fourth step that is computing the weight of the model m1 right so the next step is compute weight for model m1 so how do we compute it so let's call this as alpha 1 so the weight of the model 1 let's call it as alpha 1 okay so i'll just rub this i'll take this below okay so now we are computing alpha 1 okay so which is weight of model m1 so what is this weight this alpha 1 actually depends upon the error rate of this particular model so let me just write that alpha 1 depends on the error rate of m1 okay so if error rate is high alpha 1 will be low why because we need to give less importance to the models which are committing more errors and we want to give high weightage or high importance to those models which are committing less errors correct so that's why if the error rate is very high alpha 1 will be very low if error rate is low alpha 1 will be high okay so this is what the main idea behind assigning the weight to this particular decision stump okay so what is this error rate so in order to compute this we need to know what is this error rate right so error rate is nothing but the sum of the weights of those records which are misclassified okay so here this m1 is misclassifying four of these data points or four of these records so the error rate of m1 is addition of the weights of those data points which are misclassified so initially we have same weights assigned to each data points so since it is misclassifying four of those data points it will be 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1 so the error rate of this particular model is 0 0.4 okay so now that we know the error rate we need to assign some value to this particular alpha 1 which will be the weight for model 1 okay so in order to understand this in order to understand alpha 1 or the weight of the model 1 in detail let us slightly deviate from these steps here okay so what i'll do let's say we will have three models namely p q and r okay all these are machine learning models and each of these will have their own error rates okay so let's say p has 0% error rate okay q has 100% error rate and r has 50% error rate so in other terms when it comes to accuracy p has 100% accuracy q has 0% accuracy and r has 50% accuracy so what i am doing i am considering three models with extreme cases so one model is giving us 100% accurate results another model is giving us 
another extreme result which is 0% accuracy and we have another model which is R which is in between those two extremities that is 50% accurate. So, it has 50% error rate. So, you will understand why I have considered extreme cases and one middle case in a while. Okay. So, we want to have more weightage to this particular model P because it has high accuracy and 0% error rate. Correct. So, this will be our go to model. So, we will choose this particular model if we have choice to choose among these three. Okay. Now, let us say we do not have this particular model, model P. So, model P is no more with us. It is no longer with us. We are stuck with only these two models Q and R. So, provided we have 100% error rate with model Q and 50% error rate with model R, which model would you choose? So, if you just think it, if you say you are choosing model R, it will be wrong. Okay. Why? Because we do not know for which of the 50% of the data points it is committing error and for which of the 50% of the data points it is giving us correct predictions. So, we do not know that. So, in this case, what we will do? We will choose this particular model Q and in the end, while we get the predictions, we will just negate the predictions from this particular model Q so that the error rate would turn to 0 and accuracy would turn to 100%. Right. So, what is the idea behind this? So, let us say we have a model Q and actual value y and prediction y hat. So, if actual is 1, model Q will be predicting 0. If actual is 0, model Q will be predicting 1. So, thus it has 100% error rate and 0% accuracy. Accuracy. Correct. So, what we are doing, we are choosing this particular model given we have only Q and R models. In the end, what we will do? Once we get the predictions, we will just negate its predictions. So, after negating the predictions, negate y hat. So, we will get 1 and 0. So, which will be equal to our y 1 and 0. So, in this way, we will have our model Q performing and giving us the result of 100% accuracy and 0% error rate. Okay. So, this is the model Q. And model R we do not want to choose it because it is dangerous model dangerous model okay so now if you think of assigning weightage to these models p q and r p will obviously get some high value alpha p it will be very high because it has 0% error rate and r we actually want alpha r to be close to 0 or equal to 0 because we do not want these kind of models to be present with us. Okay. So, the weightage for this model R will be 0. So, what will be the weightage for the model Q? So, what will be the value for alpha Q? So, if you just think it, the predictions of Q we are negating in the end to get our correct predictions, right? So, similar on the similar lines, the weightage of alpha Q or the value of alpha Q will be some opposite value of alpha p. Why? Because p and q are the same models if we negate the predictions of model q. So, in other words, if we just take other extreme end of the value and assign its negative value to the model q as its weight, we will have the similar models p and q. Correct? So, if you now visualize it, okay, so, let us just visualize it. So, let me draw a 2D line here. So, let us say the x axis represents error rate and y axis represents alpha value. Okay. So, for model P, error rate is very low, it is 0 or almost 0. So, we need to have some high value for the alpha. So, this point represents for model P. Okay. So, for model Q, error rate is very high which is 100%, but if we negate those predictions, we get high accuracy and the model will be reliable, right? So, we need the weightage for model Q to be the quite opposite weight that we have assigned to model P, right? So, it will be somewhere here. So, error rate is high and alpha value for model Q will be with some opposite sign and it will be of same value that of model P. 
so this will be the alpha value for model q and for something of r something of sort of model r which has 50% error rate so this is 0 this is 0 0.5 and this is 1 okay so if it has 50% error rate we do not usually entertain those kind of models and we assign a zero value of alpha to it so this is how the model r will get the alpha value zero so another thing to remember is error rate always varies between zero and one you have to remember this so this error rate value always varies between zero and one either it will be zero or one zero represents 100 percent accurate one represents zero percent accurate results okay so if you connect these three points here so we will get a graph something like this okay so this is the graph so this is the graph that alpha follows with respect to error rate okay so in order to calculate alpha for us we need to have a mathematical function that follows this particular shape when we plot the values so we have that particular mathematical function which is nothing but 1 by 2 into natural logarithm of 1 minus error rate divided by error rate okay so this will be the formula for alpha okay so for alpha 1 so we have to calculate and assign the weight for model right so we are dealing with m1 now correct so we need to calculate alpha 1 so the formula for computing alpha 1 is 1 by 2 into natural logarithm of 1 minus error rate of model 1 divided by error rate of model 1 so we already know the error rate of model 1 which is 0.4 so how do we know that we have calculated it here right so this is 0.4 so we will just substitute that in order to get the value for alpha 1 so alpha 1 is equal to 1 by 2 into natural log of 1 minus 0.4 by 0 0.4 so this will be 1 by 2 into natural log of 0 0.6 by 0 0.4 so if you simplify it you will get a value of 0 0.2027 okay so alpha 1 will be equal to 0 0.2027 so i have computed this value and noted it separately so that's why i'm referring it and writing it directly okay you can verify its computation and value so alpha 1 we got it which is the weight for model 1 and the value is 0 0.2027 okay so we are done with this particular step now compute the weights for the model now the next step is update the weights for each record based on the predictions such that correctly classified records will get less weight and misclassified records will get more weight okay so what we do we will compute new set of weights for each of these records based on this prediction okay so what i'll do i'll just copy this copy this data and paste it here so that i can write the new updated weights okay so now we have to compute the weights for each of these records such that the correctly classified records will get less weight and misclassified records would get more weights so for that we have a formula so the formula is for misclassified for misclassified records new weight will be is equal to new weight will be is equal to current weight or if you want to treat it as old weight that's okay current weight into e to the power plus alpha okay for correctly classified records correctly classified records the formula for new weight will be it will be similar new weight is equal to current weight into e to the power minus alpha so only the difference of the sign here okay so this is the formula so using this formula we will now compute the weights for 
these particular records. So for misclassified records, the new weight, let me write it as NW is equal to, so the current weight is 0 0.1, which is same for all the records, into e to the power plus alpha. So what is the value of alpha? This is with respect to model 1 we are dealing with, right? So the value of alpha is 0 0.2027, e to the power 0 0.2027. So, this particular new weight value will be is equal to 1.2247. So, I have calculated that and noted it here separately so that I am writing it straight away. You can verify its value. Okay. So, for misclassified data points, we get this particular weight now. Instead of 0 0.1, the new weights will be 1.2247. Okay. And similarly, for the correctly classified points, new weight will be calculated using this particular formula which is 0 0.1 into e to the power minus alpha, which is 0 0.2027. So, if you compute this, the new weight for the correctly classified records, you will get 0 0.8165. Okay. So, you can verify these values. So, now what we will do, we will create a new column called as updated weights. and we will write those weights here. So, this is a correct classified record. So, the new weight will be 0 0.8165. This is a misclassified record. So, it will get 1.2247. 1.2247. So, similarly, we will write for each of these records. Okay. Okay. So, I have written the weights here based on whether they are misclassified or correctly classified using this particular calculation okay so if you compute the total of this so you will get somewhere around 9.97 uh, sorry 9.7978 okay so let me write it correctly so the sum of all these updated weights will be equal to 9.7978 okay so we usually want the sum of the weights to be equal to 1 so, what we will do? We will normalize this. So, how we will normalize this? So, we will create a new column called as normalized weights. Okay. And then we will divide each of this value by 9.7978 and we will write its corresponding value as normalized weights. Okay. So, I will just compute it and write it here. So, I have written the normalized weights here. If you do the summation of this, the value will be close to 1 because I have round, rounded it off to 4 decimal points, 4 or 5 decimal points. So, I am not getting actual value 1. So, it is somewhere 0 0.9997. Okay. So, you can treat it as 1. So, we need some of the weights to be equal to 1. So, now that we have computed the weights, we will use the cumulative sum of these normalized weights and put each record in one bucket so that we will get a range okay so i will tell you how do we do that but first let me write those values in a separate table okay okay so i have written down the values here for a column called as range so how i calculated this for the first record it's between 0 and the value that we have for the normalized weight that is 0 0.0833 for the next record it starts from the 0 0.0833 and the summation of 0 0.0833 plus 0 0.1249 that is 0 0.2028. So, this will be the range for this particular record. So, I will tell you in a while why you are doing this. So, the next step I will be explaining that particular part. So, now you need to understand how I came up with these numbers. These are not just some random numbers. These are all based on the normalized weights that we have calculated in our previous step. Okay. So, for the third record it will be 0 0.2082 to 0 0.2082 plus 0 0.1249 that is 0 0.331 right for the fourth record it will be 0 0.331 to 0 0.331 plus 0 0.0833 that is 0 0.4164 so similarly we will go on getting the cumulative range for each of the records till we hit the last record so for the last record we will get the max value as 1.0 so, if we do not get it 1.0, if we get it greater than 1, much, much greater than 1. So, we are doing something wrong somewhere. 
okay so you have to keep this in mind so once we get this range values and we introduce this column the next step would be to generate generate m random numbers m random numbers from uniform distribution so this is important okay you need to understand this so we generate m random numbers from uniform distribution so when i say uniform distribution we will get the random numbers between 0 and 1 we need the random numbers to be between 0 and 1 okay so now we are dealing with 10 records so what we will do we will generate 10 random numbers from uniform distribution between 0 and 1 so for this what we can make use of we can make use of numpy np dot random dot random random dot random and we can specify how many random numbers we want to generate if we say 10 it will give us 10 random numbers between 0 and 1 from uniform distribution okay so i have already done that so let me just share it with you guys so i have used the replit.com so these are the random numbers here okay so 0 0.414266 0 0.246187 all the way up to 0 0.8521 as our last number okay so these are set of 10 random numbers why 10 random numbers because we have taken an example where we have 10 records so now what we will do we will consider this range and the random numbers that we have generated so the first random number is 0 0.0414 right so this particular thing 0 0.0414 falls in which bucket here which range so it will fall in this particular bucket so let me just mark it with a different color so this particular thing right so this represents the first random number so this is 0 0.0414 correct 0 0.0414 is between 0 to 0 0.0833 correct so this will be the record that we will be picking as our first record in our upscaling step so here we are doing upsampling right so we are dealing with six step now create new data set by upsampling the misclassified records maintaining the total number of records in the data set so that's why we have generated 10 random numbers and based on those 10 random numbers value each of those 10 random numbers we will go and check this particular buckets so in which bucket those number fall we will select that particular record to create our new data set okay so first will be the first record that will be selecting to create a new data set will be record 1 why because this particular value 0 0.0414 is falling in the range of this particular record one so that's why this will be the first record to get picked in order to create a new data set so similarly we will take the second random number that is 0 0.2461 and we'll check in which bucket it will fall so the value is 0 0.2461 correct so 0 0.2461 falls in this particular range correct which is this particular record three so this will be picked as our second record okay so now we will get the third random number that is 0 0.449 we will see in which bucket it falls 0 0.449 falls in this particular bucket so this record will be picked this is fifth record one two three four five so the third record will be fifth record in our new data set right so similarly we will iterate over all these random numbers and then compare it to the buckets so let's do that it will not take more than a minute so 0 0.2066 so 0 0.2066 falls in this particular bucket right so we will pick this record next 2066 okay and then the next number is 0 0.7216 0 0.7216 will come under this bucket so this record will be picked next so the next random number is 0 0.6083 0 0.6083 comes under this bucket so next this record will be picked okay and then 
we get go to the next random number that is 0 0.3099 so 0 0.3099 comes under this bucket so again this record would be picked up for the second time the third record would be picked up for the second time okay and then 0 0.2250 correct 0 0.2250 again falls under this same bucket so we will pick up this particular record for the third time now the next number is 0 0.7503 so 0 0.7503 will come under this bucket so we will pick up this data point again so which is eighth data point okay and the final one 0 0.8521 so 0 0.8521 comes under this bucket so we will pick up this particular data point so now if we count it 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so we have picked up 10 records of course with duplicates present in it so why we are doing this we want to upsample the misclassified data points so that we can train our next weak learner that is decision stump so our new data set will have the first record so let me just write the row numbers here our new data set will have first record once third rec uh, sorry the first record once second record once okay third record three times okay so i'll just write it 3 3 3 it will be repeated three times the fourth record would be ignored because it is anyway it is getting correctly classified so we do not bother to improvise upon that then we will pick the fifth record right we will pick fifth record once we will pick sixth record once then we will pick we will ignore seventh record we will pick eighth record twice right so we will get eighth record twice and we will get ninth record once so if you count it 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so we total have 10 records which we are maintaining with our initial data records that we had with us but only thing that we did is we ups, upsampled the misclassified data points so which are the misclassified data points here record number 2 record number 3 record number 5 and record number 8 so let me just write that 2 3 5 and 8 right so 2 3 5 8 so these records have been misclassified by model 1 so we want in some way to upsample this in our new data set so that we can train our model 2 okay so now let us see if we have upsampled it so we are getting two ones so we did not actually upsample the record 2 but have we managed to upsample record 3 yes we have upsampled it so we have replicated it three times record 3 has been replicated three times okay and record 5 we have got it but we have not upsampled it record 8 we have upsampled it twice okay so none of the misclassified records are getting dropped out in the new data set and few of the correctly classified data points are getting dropped so this will be our new data set right so it will have its features x1 x2 up to xn so it will have its own actual value okay and we will have our new weights here which are our normalized weights so this is our new data set so what's the actual value for record one so let me just refer it to here i have noted it down separately so for record one it is one for record two actual value is zero for record three actual value is one so one 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 so that's done for record five the actual value is zero for record six actual value is one so that is one for record eight actual value is one so one one twice and for record nine it is zero so these are our actual values based on the row numbers that we have in our new data set and new weights it will be the weights for these particular 
records. So for record one, the normalized weight is 0 0.0833, correct? So we will have this 0 0.0833. So for record number two, the normalized weight is 0 0.1249. So it will be 0 0.1249. For record three, of course, it is misclassified. So it will have the value 0 0.1249, which is greater than 0 0.0833. 0 0.1249 since it, since it is repeating thrice we will have the same weights here 1249 0.1249 so similarly for record number 5 so record number 5 the weight is 0 0.1249 correct 0 0.1249 for record number 6 the weight is 0 0.0833 0 0.0833 for record number 8 it is again 0 0.1249 because it is it has been misclassified by model m1 so we're repeating it twice so it will be 0 0.1249 we are correctly classifying record number 9 so the weight is 0 0.0833 so this is our new data set right so this particular thing is our new data set so we are done with just one iteration of our ada boost when I say just one iteration, we have just fit one weak learner now. So what we will do, we will fit k such weak learners by repeating these steps. So for model two, which will be the new, which will be the data set, this particular new data set will be acting as input to our model two. What is this model two? Again, it's a decision tree with max depth is equal to 1. So, it is a decision stem or shallow decision tree. Again, what we will do? Based on the error rate, we will calculate its weight alpha 2 by following the same logic as we did for model 1. Okay, Same formula, but error rate would be different because it will have its own errors. So, M2 will have its own errors. So, it, it is okay to commit its own errors, right? So, there is no hard and fast rule that we need to fit with 100% accuracy in our accuracy in our next iteration. So, there is no hard and fast rule for that, correct? So, M2 will have its own errors. So, it will have its own error rate. So, it will have its own alpha 2. So, similarly, we will create new data set D3 based on the sampling and based on the random numbers that we generate and we will feed it as input to our model 3. So, it will have its own error rate and it will have its own alpha 3 okay so like this we will train k weak learners and we will have k model weights so in the end what we will do to get the final prediction we will multiply the weights with their respective models alpha 2 into m2 plus alpha 3 into m3 plus so on and so forth up to alpha k into mk so, when I say M1, M2, so I should not have written M1, M2, M3 here. So, it should be predictions from M1, M2, M3 up to Mk. So, let me write that. So, final prediction. So, final prediction will be is equal to alpha 1 into predictions from model 1 plus alpha 2 into predictions from model 2. Y hat represents prediction, prediction from model 2 plus alpha 3 into predictions from model 3 so on and so forth up to alpha k into predictions from model k right so now we have our ada boost model ready for classification task so i know this is a bit long video but the math is really simple the only thing you have to there are two important things here so this particular intuition on calculating the model weight Right, I have explained it with beautiful example by taking three models PQR. Why we need this sort of mathematical function to compute weights for the models, and then you need to understand what is this random number generation and bucketing the records into some range. So, the idea is since the misclassified records has higher weights, it will have higher range, so the range would be wider. So, when we generate the random number, 
there is a higher probability of that particular random number falling in that particular wider range which has been assigned to the misclassified data point okay so this is what the crux behind generating this range and generating the random number from uniform distribution okay so these are the two main ideas in ada boost which will help us to achieve our end goal to have low bias and low variance model by combining multiple weak learners which are high bias low variance models okay so hope you have, you have understood this in detail i have hope i have succeeded in providing the intuition and you are able to understand the math behind it okay so in my next video what we will do we will implement this by just making use of decision tree and we will try to implement it without using ada boost library okay without using ada boost class from sklearn library so we will see in the next video if you like the content please give it thumbs up share it among your peers and if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do subscribe it helps me a lot and keeps me motivated to come up with such great contents okay so till we see in the next video guys happy learning bye bye